Okay, so let me offer a very quick, I know we're running a bit late, so I'll offer a very quick view of the, of the challenge, the theme for the workshop, but in particular for the day, I call it the Great Integration Challenge, Deep Learning and Deep Reasoning. So there is a sense these days that computer science is changing in fundamental fundamental way, which is we're changing from a science that was driven by, by models and to science that it's driven by data. And some people think of it, Boolean paradigm shift. In the traditional way we read the, the structure of scientific revolution, throw out the old, the old paradigm and you bring in the new paradigm. We throw out the Ptolemaic model, brought in the Copernican model. But this is actually rather than exception. Typically we don't throw out the old theory, we just refine them. So we all use still internal mechanics. If you use it, if my house was engineer used internal mechanics, we went to the moon using internal mechanics. So I, I argue that data science refined formal science, but we shouldn't throw the decades of research behind us. And my view of logic and machine learning relate has to do with uh, Daniel Kahneman thinking fast and slow. And I know that Francesca will talk more about it today, but in a nutshell, machine learning is about fast thinking. It's simplified, I, I admit, but you know, you go to, you you have an AV on the road, you see a sign, this is a stop sign. That's machine learning. But knowing what to do when you see a particular sign, I'm saying this is logic. And there was a really important paper that somehow did not get, uh, I think, enough publicity by Anon Shashua, who is the founder of Mobileye, about, about AVs. And he says he thinks that we need to make AV a thousand times safer than human drivers. But if we're just going to do it based on data, then we'll have to drive one billion miles as driving, which is not feasible. But to show that if you're going to, we're going to combine models with reasoning, I mean, uh, data and reasoning, then we can cut it to one million miles, which is feasible. This is really the great challenge, logic and machine, how to command logic and machine learning. But when you talk, when I start talking to, to people about logic, they says, well, anything happened since Aristotle, what has logic done to us lately? And the answer is that uh, logic has a huge impact, in particular for IBM, which is called relational modeling that published a paper published in 1970 with two beautiful ideas. The tables we are familiar with are really mathematical relations, and logical formulas can be viewed as queries about the what rather than the how. And code received the Turing Award for this within 11 years, which is very, very fast. Mike Stone became from Berkeley a little longer, but eventually also the Turing Award. The last estimated array that this industry today is over $60 billion a year. Bruce Lindsay, whom I know, I know from um, my days at IBM Almaden, said, I think very correctly, that Western civilization resting on, the t on top of traditional databases. If the data would disappear, the world would come to a stop. Now, the, the kind of a crucial crux of, of logical reasoning, but Boolean reasoning, and we have the satisfiability problem where you have a, a Boolean expression. In this case, it is like a normal form. You have to assign variable 0 or 1, and uh, you want to know whether you can find assignment with the whole thing with the value at 2, 1. And of course, one of the, the prominent results in theoretical computer science is that this problem then become shown by Cook and Levine independently in the early 70s. Now, when I was a graduate student, we thought, I'm complete, there's nothing more to do, go home. You can, you can problem, the problem is intractable. But people have working on the, on the practical side, building, writing algorithms, developing algorithms for Boolean reasoning, from the early days of computer science, going back to the mid 50s, computers were very young. And eventually, throughout the 50s and early 60s, a method was developed, became known as Davis, Logeman, Lav uh, um, Davis Pattern, Logeman, and Loveland, DPLL, which essentially backtracking search. And by the early 90s, they could solve problems with hundreds of variables. Told them it's too small, they would say, Well, what do you want? It's NP complete. But something magical happened starting in the mid-90s, which is the discovery of many other heuristics, and I won't go in detail over each heuristic here, but they are kind of very fundamental heuristic. I think the big mistake was to call it CDCL, if 
you look today, the research they call the CDCL solving. Nobody, you know, very few people understand CDCL. It was a huge marketing mistake. You should call it deep reasoning or deep solving. But the reality today that we, are, we can solve industrial problems with millions of variables. So, huge progress, in some sense, analogous to what happened with deep learning. And this is a chart from, by Sanjit Shesha from Berkeley from a decade ago, but to show you, he basically took 12 years of such solvers and put them on the same benchmark on the same machine. See how benchmark that took 800 seconds in 2000 was running one second by, by 2012. So there was such astounding pro progress, people call it Moore's law for such solving. And by now we have actually many industrial applications. Uh, for example, Microsoft published also already a decade ago how such solving is used in software production in the Microsoft, not in research, software production, all kind of aspects, formal technique for soft, software development. So today, in this, today such solving is industrial reality. So the challenge to us is how to combine these two very different paradigm. Well, you think how they are not that different because if you go back to the roots of of neural, of neural nets, it's the paper by Pitts and McCool in 1944. You go back to the paper; it was about logic, but trying to enrich logic, just going from Boolean a richer logic. And the question is how to integrate these two things. And whenever you talk about integrating two paradigms, there are two two modes. There is what we call a tight coupling, you really beat everything together, versus loose coupling, you have different modules and they somehow interact with each other. And this is uh, one of the major themes that people will be discussing today. We'll have